What if you could completely change the look of your kitchen with just some paint and a little elbow grease? Let me show you how. I'm Jenny with Roots and Wings Furniture and today I'm starting a kitchen makeover. So we're gonna walk you through the steps that you need to know to make over your kitchen. I'm actually working in my neighbor's kitchen today. We are gonna um, completely transform the look of this place. So let's jump in and get started. I'm gonna tell you, I think the most important thing about painting your kitchen is not necessarily the products you use, but the prep work that you do beforehand. So that's what we're gonna do now. Let me show you a few things we're gonna do to get this ready. Start by removing all of the hardware. I would recommend using a drill for this and just unscrew all the screws, both on the handles. Set them aside if you're gonna reuse them or toss them if you're all done with them. And then take out the hinges in the same way. Save all of the screws because you never know if you're gonna need them, even if you're replacing your hardware. Also, if you wanna pick new hardware, now is a great time to do it. Get it all ordered so you are ready to reinstall it when your cabinets are finished. Okay, here's the really important part. You've gotta clean these cabinets so well. So I start with Cry Cutter. It is a degreaser. Get it nice and soaked all over the cabinet doors. And then I use a Scotch-Brite pad to really scuff it up as I work and also scrubs off any grease. Most kitchen cabinets like this have not been properly cleaned in about 20 years. And that's fine, that's just how it goes. But you've gotta get all that grease off so the paint has something to really stick to. So give it a really good scrubbing. You'll be amazed at what will come off. Okay, and once I was finished cleaning with the crud cutter and the Scotch-Brite pad, I grabbed a second cleaner. Now this can either be a TSP solution or like the denatured alcohol and water mixture I use a lot on furniture. I sprayed the cabinet down again and wiped it with paper towels and you can see how much you're bringing up from both of these products. It's just really cleaning these cabinets really, really well um, and getting anything off there that needs to be. Do some scuff sanding on any flat parts. It's up to you if you want to do them on the cabinet doors or not. I did end up going back and hitting the doors of these cabinets just in the flat areas um, and around the top edges. Just scuff sand it with 220 grit sandpaper and then clean it the way I just showed you. Get all of that stuff off of there so we're really starting with a good surface for the paint and the primer to stick to. It's tedious, but I'm telling you, this part is the most important. Once the doors are all removed, we took them in another room and set them all aside, and then we could prep the boxes the exact same way. Uh, this kitchen had quite a few drawers, so we sanded them and cleaned them in place and then removed them later. Now here's a tip with the drawers, and this is a lifesaver. Take a piece of tape and make two labels, the same number. You can use any numbering system you want, but number the inside of the drawer as well as where the drawer goes so that in all the shuffling and moving around, you get the drawers in the right place. Now, we also did this with the cabinets. So we did all the upper cabinets and all the lower cabinets. We labeled all of them so we knew exactly where they went. When they were all finished, it was really easy to put them back in the right spot and you're not having to guess which one goes where. Don't forget, you can find links to all the products I'm using and recommending in the description below this video. 
I will also write down there for you a little bit of a timeline of what we did on which days. We completed this kitchen overall in about a week, um, working just a couple hours a day on it when we were available between kids' schedules and everything else going on. So I'll give you that outline down in the bottom as well. Okay, once the cabinets are all cleaned, we are ready for primer. So pull out your primer and your paintbrush. I chose to use Dixie Belle Boss as my primer on these cabinets. These are oak cabinets, and if you do not use a primer with any light color, they will definitely bleed, especially over time. So I wanted to use a good stain blocking primer. I chose to use Dixie Belle Boss. There's a few other options that you could use as well, but get yourself a really good stain blocker and start painting it on. Watch for drips. Some primers tend to be a little bit more runny, so just give it a nice even coat. So we did a lot of prep work in the kitchen and now we've got all of our cabinets ready to spray. Now here's the deal with spraying. I think it's well worth it to invest a little bit in a paint sprayer. I'll show you mine. Um, none of this is sponsored whatsoever, but this is a great little paint sprayer that's great for home use. If you're just doing it in your kitchen, you got your dining room chairs to do something like that. So here's the setup for spraying. I'm in my garage. Um, I've got the garage door open, so I've got lots of air circulation. And then we just set up the spray tent. Um, and you don't have to get a spray tent necessarily. You could set up plastic bags that, you know, make yourself a box or something. You're gonna want something though, because the overspray does tend to, um, it does, it gets around. So you don't wanna spray everything else in your garage. Definitely you don't wanna spray your car. So don't do that. Um, and then I've got also a drop cloth down on the floor. This is a little post that I made and I've used now for every kitchen that I've done. All it is is some scrap wood on a post and I made it to the height basically um, where it's easy for me to be spraying and I'm not bending over or doing anything funny with my back. Cause you really do, you just kind of get in a groove and you just go. Um, so that's something that I made super easy. Just get some scrap wood, make yourself a post. And then here's the cabinet doors. I did prime these yesterday, also with this paint sprayer. So everything you see, I did the exact same thing yesterday, just with primer. I use water-based primer in the spray gun, and this is about what they look like. So this is where we got to yesterday. Um, what else to tell you? You do, when you use this little sprayer, this is the one I'm using. It is a Home Right Finish Max. It's really easy to use, even if you've never used a sprayer before. If it's your very first time, grab a piece of cardboard and just kind of go to town and get the feel of it. But it's really easy to use. You water down your paint just a little bit, like 10%. Um, put a little water in here just to get it a little more liquid so it goes through your sprayer easier. Um, but that's really all there is to this. It's easy to clean, there's directions, um, it's no big deal. And this little guy is a powerful machine. You definitely need, um, protection for your face, a mask. If your eyes are sensitive, um, wear some glasses. But this is our setup, so let me show you how to do it. So right after I finished filming 
the part where we're talking about the sprayer. The sprayer stopped working on me and I'm sure it was user error. It must have gotten clogged or something. I could not figure it out for the life of me. So I ended up grabbing my brush because I was so frustrated at that point. I just needed to get these doors done. I grabbed my paintbrush and just started brushing and it worked fine. It took a little bit longer than using my paint sprayer, but this just goes to show you if you don't have a sprayer or you don't wanna invest in one, you can definitely just use a brush and apply coat by coat just like you would either way. So that's it. I ended up in total doing two coats of primer, three coats of paint, and one coat of top coat. That was what it took to get these cabinets fully covered. They turned out beautiful. Once the doors were all finished, I brought them back and we started reinstalling the hardware. We picked all new hinges and hardware so it would really contrast with the cabinets. So we just installed them one at a time as we found the labels that went with the cabinets and it was starting to come together and turn out beautiful. One thing I didn't show you before now is uh, my neighbor wanted to do her island a different color. So we actually chose Queenstown Gray for the island. Because it was a darker color and not the lighter one, I did not prime it the way I did with the light colored cabinets. So this got a cleaning and prep just like you saw and then it ended up getting two coats of Queenstown Gray and one coat of top coat. So the island stands out a little bit from the rest of the cabinets. In less than a week, we took this kitchen from the old oak cabinets to bright and fresh and airy, and my neighbor loves it. So I'm so happy with how this kitchen turned out. We changed all of the hardware and all of the hinges. We painted the doors in antique white, and we've got the accent on the island here. It is a beautiful space to be in now. So don't forget, with just a little bit of paint, a little bit of work, and a few hours, you can transform your kitchen too. We'll see you later. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out my website, rootsandwingsfurniture.com for more painting tips and tricks and DIY. Also, subscribe to this channel so that you won't miss a thing. Click the button below.